to uh, join together in 2 Kings this evening, 2 Kings. The Word of God says, for we walk by faith, not by sight. And if ever there were a Bible passage that uh, demonstrates that truth, it would be here in 2 Kings chapter 6. But we're also going to look in chapter 7. So God sets the stage in chapter 6 and verse 24. Trouble in the Middle East. And it came to pass after this that Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, gathered all his host and went up and besieged Samaria. And so Samaria is besieged, surrounded. All supplies to Samaria have been stopped and they're in trouble. Oh my. They're in a lot of trouble. Well, verse 25. Gives us just a glimpse of how serious it all is. And there was a great famine in Samaria because they're besieged, shortages. And behold, they besieged it until an ass's head was sold for four score pieces of silver. And that equates to about $50, roughly. And the fourth part of a cab of doves dung. No, you read it right. <laughs> For five pieces of silver. Um, fourth part of a cab is approximately one pint of dove's dung was selling for three dollars roughly. And so gives us just a little look. Chapter 7, for we walk by faith not by sight. The just shall live by faith. It's all by faith. I mean, times are hard, things are bad. I mean, when that's the menu, yeah, hard times. But a word from God, then Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus, saith the Lord. All right. Tomorrow, about this time, shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of of Samaria. That's a word from God. Father, in times like these are, uh, please encourage us to walk by faith, to live by faith. Father, oh, how we need to hear from you tonight. 
And then, Lord, we uh, pray that you would come and meet with us. I pray that you would um, take the complete oversight of this service, Lord. Help us. We've never needed your help more in these uh, final closing days of the church age. And, uh, oh my, Heavenly Father, how we pray for the peace of Israel. And in praying for the peace of Israel, we are in fact praying, even so come, Lord Jesus. There is no other, um, there is no other remedy for what is uh, happening before our eyes. Um, thy kingdom come. Oh God, thy will be done on earth even as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name we ask, amen. It's bad, but it's all going to change overnight. That's God's message. That's God's word. Verse 2, then a Lord on whose hand the king leaned. So that would be the king of Samaria. Besieged, selling doves dung by the pint for $3. And I just have a hard time getting my mind around that, but... Uh, that's exactly what's going on. And then a Lord on whose hand the king leaned. Why is he leaning? Is he weak with hunger? Possibly. Probably. But this servant of the king answered the man of God. I want you to look. Hear his answer and said, Behold, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, might this thing be? Question mark. He's questioning the word of God, which means he's doubting God's word. And he said, Behold, Thou shalt see it with thine eyes. So the man of God responds to this servant of the king. And the man of God, Elisha says, in response to his unbelief, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but shalt not eat thereof. Because of your unbelief, you will not be blessed. You will miss this blessing because you have made the decision to doubt, to disbelieve God's word. Wow. Now you want to mark your place, but do go to Hebrews chapter 3. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 18, and I'm going to read beyond. And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest? Meaning, escape their fear, their worry, their anxiety. To whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest? But to them that did what, church? 
There is no rest outside of faith. So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. God says it, I don't believe it. God put it in print. The Holy Bible, all scripture is inspired by God. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the Son of Man that he should repent, but I don't believe it. No rest because of unbelief. Chapter 4, verse 1 Let us therefore fear lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them. Listen to this. The word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it for we which have believed do enter into rest wow so the servant of the king has made the decision to doubt to doubt God's word. From our text, 2 Kings 7 <clears throat> and verse 2, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but shalt not eat thereof. You're going to see God's word fulfilled come to fruition, come to pass. You're going to see all this abundance of food, but you're not going to partake of it. You're not going to benefit from it because you've made the decision to doubt, to disbelieve, the word of God. And uh, this is interesting. There were four leprous men at the entering in of the gate. That, that's the gate of Samaria, this besieged Samaria. Now, you, you talk about in between a rock and a hard spot. They have a killer disease, leprosy. And uh, why are they at the entering in of the gate? <laughs> They're not allowed in the city. They're highly infectious. Nobody wants them around. I mean, they're eating dove's dung, donkey heads in the city, and they're at the gate of the city. And so now God gives us this discussion, this Dialogue between these lepers. And they said one to another. Now there they are. Uh, Why sit we here until we die? See, they know that they know that this disease uh, is going to kill them. 
I mean, this is their discussion. Why sit we here until we die? If we say we will enter into the city, then the famine is in the city and we shall die there. And if we sit here, we die also. I mean, is there any way out of this for them? Is there any hope for them? Is there any help? Is there any remedy? I mean, death is staring them in the face. And you know, that's like a church. If a church internalizes, she'll die. If a church sits, it just sits, she'll die. She'll die, just like these lepers. <laughs> now, look at this. Now, therefore, come, they're talking amongst themselves, <laughs> and, and let us fall unto the host of the Syrians. <laughs> if if they save us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we, we shall but die. Wow. I mean, what a discussion. And uh, they rose up, verse 5. They rose up. So, you talk about a ginormous step of faith. They rose up in the twilight. So I'm thinking at the end of their day. <clears throat> to go unto the camp of the Syrians... What an incredible step of faith. But they're not just going to sit there and die. And they're not going to internalize and go into a city that is dying. They're going to take this step and they're going to go. They can't sit and die. They can't go inside and die. They're going to go out. They're going to go, can, look, what do you think the prospect of the Syrian army is that is besieging Samaria? What do you think the prospect is of the Syrian army besieging the city, greeting them with welcoming arms? Oh, hello, fellas. Oh, it's so good to see you. Covered with leprosy? <clears throat> Covered with leprosy. But they took a step. They took a step. And, and it's just this incredible step to go onto the camp of the Syrians. Rather than to sit around dying, because that's exactly what would have happened, they would have died. The city was dying. The king is so weak, he has to lean on a servant to help him stand up. Wow. So they rose up in the twilight to go unto the camp of the Syrians. And when they were come, 
to the uttermost part of the camp of Syria, behold, there was no man there. And when they got to the, the uh, outlying area of the Syrian camp, that point at which they would just begin to enter into the camp, there was no man there. Watch this in verse 6. Look at this. For the Lord had made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise of chariots. The Lord had made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise of horses, even the noise of a great host. to hear the noise that uh, an attacking army would make. God made the Syrians to hear those, that noise. And so they said one to another, the Syrian soldiers said one to another, uh, Lo, the king of Israel hath hired against us the kings of the Hittites, the kings of the Egyptians, to come up on us. When did they hear the noise of an attacking army? When did that noise begin? I'll tell you when I think it began. I think it began as soon as those leper, leprous men made the decision to take a step of faith and go out. <laughs> I mean, those men, I mean, you know, what's the worst they can do to us? Kill us? <laughs> Let's not just sit here and die. Let's take this step. Let's go. Because as remote as the possibility is, they might help us. I mean, in their mind. Do you know when God begins to work for you, child of God? God begins to work for you at the point you decide to take steps of faith, to trust him, to believe him. And by the way, usually <laughs> obedience to God necessitates faith. You know, whatever it is God wants any child, any servant of his to do, Going to require faith. And God goes to work at the moment you turn to faith. As long as we're living by sight, God's not working. Why should He? Why would He? But like these lepers, the moment we make the decision, to live by faith, to do what we know and what we understand to be the will of God for our lives the moment we make the decision. All right, God, I don't understand how this is going to work. I don't see how this can work. It doesn't seem logical to me it it doesn't make any sense to me, but you are speaking to me from your word, your will for my life. 
And the only way I'm going to be able to enter into your will, your plan for my life, is to take a step of faith. God goes to work. They took a step of faith. <laughs> and uh, God made the host, that is to say the entire Syrian army, to hear the noise of chariots and horses, the noise that an attacking army would make. <laughs> and uh, verse 7, Wherefore they arose and fled in the twilight. Now, and now God lets us see uh, how quickly they departed. Well, uh, and left their tents, and left their horses, and left their asses. And left the camp as it was and fled for their life. Um, because four leprous men made the decision to go. You know, Jesus still says go. But do you understand if we, if we try to stay safe, Jesus still says go. I think God was prompting them then. I think God is prompting his people today to go. Now, it's safe. But really, is it safe in the city? They're all dying. And if we just sit here at the gate of the city, we're going to die. The only prospect of life that they had as, as small, I mean, honestly, I mean, you, you talk about, uh, are you kidding me? Walking out to the Syrian army besieging Samaria as a leper with all of the Indications of leprosy? <laughs> but that's what they did. And God honored that. God blessed that. <laughs> and uh, their life was completely um, changed because they went. Because um, they didn't just sit there and die. And uh, so, verse 8, and uh, when these lepers came to the uttermost part of the camp, they went into one tent. Well, you can imagine. This is a... This is a um, army numbering in the hundreds of thousands besieging all of Samaria, Israel. And there's nobody there. And uh, they go into one tent. Now they could, have gone, they could have gone back into town. I guess maybe they could have tried to sneak back into town. And and uh, started eating dove's dung, but they would have died. <laughs> but they went, they took these steps, and uh, they did eat and drink. And beyond eating and drinking, carried thence would you look at this? Silver and gold and raiment and went and hid it. They hid it. 
and came again and entered into another tent and carried thence also and went and hid it. Verse number nine. Then they said one to another, we do not well. This day is a day of good tidings. That means good news. And we hold our peace. We're keeping it a secret. We took this step to go and look at what God has done and we're keeping it all to ourselves. We do not well. If we tarry the morning light, some mischief will come upon us. If we just keep this all to ourselves, keep it a secret, this, this good news, um, some mischief will come upon us. Now, therefore, come that we may go and tell the king's household. The king, who's leaning on the servant because he's obviously so um, weak that he can't stand up on his own. So they came and called unto the porter of the city, and they told them, saying, We came to the camp of the Syrians, and, behold, there was no man there, neither voice of man, but horses tied, asses tied, and the tents as they were. And he called the porters, and they told it to the king's house within. Now we see the response to the glad tidings, the response of uh, the Sumerians to the good news that these four men are endeavoring to share uh, with the city. Verse 12, And the king arose in the night and said unto his servants, I will now show you what the Syrians have done to us, they know that we be hungry, therefore are they gone out of the camp to hide themselves in the field, saying, when they come out of the city, we will catch them alive and get into the city. And one of his servants answered and said, let some take, I pray thee, five of the horses that remain, which are left in the city, Behold, they are as all the multitude of Israel that are left in it, skin and bones, starving. Um, but behold, I say, they're even as all the multitude of the Israelites that are consumed. Let us send and see. Let's, let's go have a look. They took, therefore, two chariot horses, and the king sent uh, after the host of the Syrians saying, go and see. And they went after them unto Jordan, and lo, all the way was full of garments and vessels which the Syrians had cast away in their haste. And the messengers returned and told the king. And the people went out and spoiled the tents of the Syrians so that a measure of fine flour sold was sold for a shekel. The dollar equivalent, about a dollar and 76 cents for a measure of fine flour. And that's a lot better deal than $3 for dove's dung. I don't care how you slice it up. And two measures of barley for a shekel. 
according to what, church? Listen, when God says it, I hope you'll believe it. Because if, if you take the position of choosing disbelief, doubt, there's no blessing there. You know, and, and God wanted these lepers to go, to go out. God wants this church to go out. You know, sure, the safest thing would be for all of us just to stay in. But by staying in, and by internalizing, we face the certain prospect of death. God says, if you want to live, go out. Take these glad tidings that have invited God's blessing upon your life. Don't keep it a secret. Don't light a candle and put a bushel over the candle. Let it shine. Go out. Let your light so shine. And share the good news. It's, you know, those four lepers, do you not think that they didn't know it would be dangerous out there? So it's safe in here, but if we just stay in here, we die. <laughs> but if we go out, and we go out by faith, with the good news, the glad tidings, of how God has blessed our lives, and we go out and share the good news with others, Sure, it's dangerous out there, but we'll live. But we'll live. <laughs> so you know it all comes down to this question. Do we want to we live or do we want to die? Do we want to just stay safe, die, or take the step of faith and go out? And you know, remember, when did God go to work on the on the behalf of these four lepers? The moment they chose to believe. God went to work. And anything, anything that God wills for you to do will require a step of faith. Anything that God wills for you to do cannot be done apart from faith. And that is God's divine arrangement. And that ensures that God and God alone will get all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. And faith ensures that we will have to depend upon him, rely upon him every step of the way. And that's God's will. That's the way of God. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Um, verse 17. Uh, and the king appointed the Lord on whose hand he leaned. The king And the king appointed the Lord on whose hand he leaned. See, the king is eating now. The king no longer needs the servant to lean on. The king is regaining his strength. He's able to appoint the servant to another station of duty. Isn't that interesting? Uh, the king's life is blessed. He no longer needs that servant to lean on. And so the king appointed the Lord on whose hand he leaned to have the charge of the gate. <laughs> That's the same gate where the four leprous men made their life-changing decision to take that step of faith and go. And look what God did for them. Say, by the way, what happened to that silver and gold and 
garments that they hid. I don't see in the text where they told the king, oh, by the way, we hid these treasures. I just think God gave it to them. I think that's the blessing of the faith that they exhibited. That, that was God's blessing to them. I mean, I, I think these four men are so glad they took that step to go. Even though, even though they, they realized there was, a, there was a prospect of being killed. I think right about now those four men are so glad, so glad that they went. And, uh, and so, you know, see, you know, the enemy is such a liar. The enemy will always and only um, put in your mind, if you'll let him, if you'll allow it, uh, only the worst case scenarios. Uh, to strike a chord of fear and to keep you saying, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. Because what does the enemy know about God? If you take the step of faith and you do what you know in your heart of hearts, God has been prompting you to do what God wants you to do and you're, you're struggling with it because... Right? Because it's easier to walk by sight than it is by faith. Because if you walk by sight, you can depend upon who? Self. And, and of course, you trust yourself, and that's precisely the problem. God doesn't want you trusting yourself. He wants you trusting him. And for that to happen is going to require living by faith. And that means you're going to have to lean on Jesus. You're going to have to, learning to lean. I'm learning to lean on Jesus. Somebody wrote a song, a hymn. Maybe that's the title of it, Learning to Lean. I'm learning to lean on Jesus. And so the devil was, you know, whispering in their mind, you know, you go out there, you're going to die. But uh, they went out. Did they die? No. They ate like they've not eaten. <laughs> they ate like you ate around Thanksgiving. I don't know. Maybe that'll help you to connect the dots. And uh, did they die? No. They're, they're blessed financially. Right? Gold, silver. That's the Bible money. Garments. New clothing. How amazing. How absolutely amazing is that. So... Um, there comes a point where you have to make the decision. Do, do I just sit here, uh, you know, thinking I'm all safe and secure, <clears throat> just, just, you know, in my comfort zone, so to speak? Or do I, or do I knew, know what, do what God, what I know God wants me to do? But <clears throat> for me to do what I know God wants me to do, I, I'm going to have to take a step of faith, and I'm not... I'm just used to trusting in me. I'm not used to trusting in God. I think these four men are so glad they took that step to go instead of just to sit there in their comfort zone and die. They had to come out of that comfort zone to do this and I think they're very glad. I don't think they have any regrets as they look back on it all. And uh, so anyway, the king appoints the servant to a new station of service. He's now going to, uh, uh, 
He's going to uh, serve the king at the gate of Samaria, at the gate of the city. Well, let's see what happens at the end of the story. And the king appointed the Lord on whose hand he leaned to have uh, the charge of the gate, and the people trod upon him in the gate, and he died. He's the gatekeeper, and he gets... Uh, what do you call this? Is it a stampede? Is that, is, that, is that the right word, stampede? What do they call it? Trampled? You know, when you go to these big group gatherings and, and the people go out of control and they, and they, and they step on those who, who fell down, and they, is that the word, trample them to death? You get the picture. Happens all the time, all over the world, these big events, panic, People fall down, and they get trampled to death. And uh, that's, that's really the epitaph of an unbeliever, because unless you believe, uh, you can't live. Um, for by grace are you saved through faith. It's all faith. It's all faith. God. If... if if it doesn't involve faith, it doesn't involve God. God has no part of it unless it involves faith. And we may only be saved by faith and uh, the grace of God. And So here's a man who made the decision, I don't believe the word of God. Now I know, uh, I know that you're preaching God's word and and uh, I know that uh, God gave you this message, and, and uh, I, I can see the handiwork of God all over this, but, but I make the choice not to believe the Word of God. Well, look at his end, if you would, please. Trampled to death at the gate of the city, Samaria. And the people trod upon him in the gate, and he died. As the man of God had said, who spake when the king came down to him, you know, at the beginning of this um, true Bible account, and it came to pass, as the man of God had spoken to the king, uh, verse 18 now, saying, two measures of barley for a shekel and a measure of fine flour for a shekel uh, shall be tomorrow about this time, in the gate of Samaria, and verse 19, that Lord answered the man of God and said, Now, behold, if the Lord should make windows in heaven, might such a thing be? Question mark. He's questioning God's word. And he said, Elijah responded, to his doubt, his unbelief. Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but shalt not eat thereof. And so it fell out unto him, for the people trod upon him in the gate, and he died. Revelation 21, verse 8, and we'll close. Revelation 21, verse 8. <clears throat> but the fearful and unbelieving and abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars. But uh, special emphasis here upon unbelieving shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Folks, that's death and hell and the lake of fire. And, uh, you know, we're not only to be saved by faith, but did you know we're to live by faith? Now, God 
tells us what he, what he wants us to do, each one of us. And then, um, and it was God prompting those four lepers. God is in the details of their decision, their choice. And it was just a ginormous. I mean, every time we go out there, it's a step of faith. We're, we're going out into the world with the, the glad tidings, the good news. And um, we, can, we can sit here uh, all tucked away, safe, cozy, secure. You know, God says, uh, and the principle is if we internalize, uh, at some point we will die. But if we want to live, we have to go out. We have to go out. And every time we make the decision by faith to go, every time we make that choice, God goes to work and he does something out there. And uh, praise be to God. Praise be to God. He is blessed. He is blessing. And uh, I believe he'll continue to bless. And so... Um, you know what it is that God's uh, convicting you about, speaking to your heart about what it is that God wants. And, and you also know the battle, the internal battle. Uh, and, and it's the same battle these lepers faced. I mean, it's a battle because they couldn't see how it's going to work. I mean, just show me, show me in advance. Let me see everything in advance, well, but if you see everything in advance, then you don't have to live by, by what? You don't have to live by faith. No, no, God says you, you take the step of faith to do what I'm prompting you to do. And, uh, and you trust me, you know, I was, we had the grandkids over, took them to the playground and, uh, there's a, you, you know, they have to climb up on some playground equipment, and it's up pretty high there. And uh, little, littlest, youngest grandchild, little boy, um, I, I don't know, what is he, two? Recently, two? Two years old, you know. He just doesn't, he just doesn't know any fear. I mean, and he climbs up there, you know, he climbs up there, and he's up there. And then, and then he's, he's looking at me, and what he wants me to do is to say to him, jump. He waits for me to say, jump. I mean, and when I say jump, he just takes a flying leap. Because he believes that his grandfather is going to catch him. He believes that. He just takes a flying leap. It is so high up for a two-year-old to come crashing down to the ground, uh, were I to not catch him. But he believes I love him. He believes I care about him. He believes I'm going to protect him. So when I say to him, when I prompt him and tell him what I want him to do, jump, Without hesitation, I mean, without hesitation, he just takes a flying leap. And I mean, I'm standing out here quite a ways away. And, uh, you know, thankfully, I catch him. And so that trust has never been broken. And I submit to you, God has never let you down. God has never. Now, we have certainly let him down. But we can't blame that on him. But he has never let us down. And uh, when you make the uh, decision to do what you know in your heart of hearts, God has been prompting you what he's been, um, you know, what he's been uh, speaking into your heart to do. And you take that leap of faith. He will catch you. And he will take care of you. So, 
Father, God, this is such an incredible, true Bible account. And these things were written for our admonition. They are in samples unto us that we may learn from them. And I pray we'll take with us tonight um, these timeless and still relevant truths about living by faith, doing, doing whatever it is you are uh, commanding us to do. And, and I don't even begin to pretend to know what you're commanding all of your children here to do. That's between you and them. <laughs> um, and they don't know what you're commanding me to do. That's between me and you. But uh, our takeaway from the Word of God is that we, we can deceive ourselves and say to ourselves, let's just, let's just make the decision to disbelieve, to doubt, and uh, hey, we'll be okay, we'll be all safe and secure if we don't do what we know God is telling us to do. Uh, and we'll die. Or we can opt instead uh, to um, uh, just take that step of faith and, uh, and cast ourselves into the arms of God. Um, Father, I, I, I pray you'll help us to choose wisely, to choose well. Um, I especially pray right now for anyone anywhere who does not know Jesus Christ as personal Savior, perhaps here in the sanctuary or perhaps uh, uh, joining us online for the Bible message uh, this evening, that uh, wherever that person is, that, Father, my prayer is you draw them to Christ. But that, that is what you do. The Holy Spirit does convict as God's word goes forth. And I pray that precious soul will accept Jesus Christ. I pray they'll do it right now, wherever they are. Uh, and uh, and uh, just uh, pray, Lord Jesus, uh, I am sorry for all of my sins against you. And uh, I admit that I've sinned against you. And Lord Jesus, I'm asking you to please come into my life. I'm asking you to forgive me for all of my sins. I'm asking you to save my soul from hell and uh, that I may spend forever with you in heaven and live the rest of my life on earth uh, for your glory and your honor. God, bless your, your word. Your will be done, I pray in Jesus' name. As we stand in quietness here at God's invitation, and as we just reflect, as we meditate, say, what is it that God has been convicting you about? And what is it that God's been telling you he wants you to start doing that you've been maybe even arguing with him about it? And you're, you're very close to making the same decision the king's servant made to doubt and well, we see the end of that servant's uh, decision. Um, whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Uh, doesn't work. Oh, God, help us, I pray. Help us, God, to live by faith and to do whatever it is you've been speaking to our hearts that you want us to do. Or perhaps you've been speaking to us about something you want us to stop. Help us by faith to obey you, God. And God, please, may we be dismissed with your blessing until we meet again. Perhaps we'll meet here. Perhaps we'll meet in the air. But until we meet again, God, please keep us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen.